Welcome to the Steam Era, a moment in history when machines began to scale in size and power like never before, powering industries and propelling humanity into an industrial revolution. This brings us to today's story, the invention of the steam engine. As you can imagine, this is one of those inventions that involves many inventors, each with their contribution. In this video, I will highlight five inventors who had the most relevant projects for the development of these huge and powerful machines. The first of them, in chronological order, is called Hero of Alexandria. Around the year 70, the inventor Heron designed a toy that can be considered as the first known steam machine, the Iolipole. Its operation was very simple. The steam from a small boiler rose through two arms to a sphere with two tangential jets, which, when the steam escaped, caused the sphere to rotate at speed. It was certainly a very entertaining device to watch if you had never seen anything beyond carts, but that was it. It would take almost 1600 years until an English inventor named Thomas Savory reintroduced steam in a machine in 1698. The difference now was that it would perform useful work by pumping water from English mines. But we'll get back to it soon. Before that, we have to take a look at the works of the second relevant inventor in our story, who laid the foundation for Thomas Savory to develop his machine. I refer to the French-born British physicist named Denis Papin. Papin was an observant and creative guy who one day, when he saw on his stove that the steam confined in the pan tended to lift the lid, had the idea of creating a hermetically sealed container but with a valve so that some of the steam could escape. An invention that nowadays is known as a pressure cooker, but in 1679, he called it a steam digester mechanism for softening bones. Well, not every inventor is good at marketing. Now, see how one research leads to another. One day, he observed that the pressure cooker, when cooling down, became very difficult to open, as if there was a vacuum inside. The lid of his cooker closed from the outside and not from the inside like the pressure cookers that many have at home. But back to the vacuum, which is a partial vacuum, it was an object of research for scientists at the time. And it was from this simple observation in the pressure cooker that he had the idea to create a device to obtain a vacuum, which consisted of a cylinder and a piston. As in the pressure cooker, the heated water turned into steam, increasing in volume 1600 times. But at this moment, a piston was pushed and locked. As soon as the system cooled down and the water condensed, a partial vacuum was created. This simple invention would be the base design for the first steam engines that would come. Concepts that were used by Thomas Savory, the third relevant inventor in our story. Savory combined Papin's knowledge with Torricelli's vacuum studies to create and patent in 1698, a water pump that could pump water from the bottom of Britain's coal mines. A life or death matter for the mining sector of the time. Shallow mines were being exhausted and miners had to dig deeper and deeper, where seepage was becoming an increasing problem. The Savory's machine, considered the first steam machine used for useful work, was a solution to this problem. The miner's friend, as it was called at the time, had a power between 1 and 4 HP, depending on the size, and worked like this. The boiler, with boiling water, produced steam that was directed to a cylinder through manual valves, where the first valve was closed so that the pressurized steam stayed in the cylinder. Next, the cylinder was sprayed with cold water on the outside to reduce the temperature, condense the steam, and reduce the internal pressure, creating a partial vacuum, Papin's idea. With the opening of the second valve, the pressure difference caused atmospheric pressure to push the water into the cylinder at a height of about 7 meters. This meant that the pump had to be installed at the bottom of the mine. Now, imagine the difficulties of putting a boiler with intense fire in a deep well. The pump cycle ended with the injection of steam under pressure into the cylinder, which pushed the water upwards to about 24 meters, a moment when explosions and serious accidents often occurred due to high pressure and the low quality of pipes and joints at the time. It was necessary for another Englishman named Thomas Newcomen, the fourth relevant inventor in our story, to develop in 1712 the first practical steam engine in history, safer and extremely important for the Industrial Revolution. To solve the problem of explosions, he and the following inventors replaced the high-pressure steam engine with atmospheric pressure steam engines. The process began with steam entering a large vertical cylinder with a piston connected to the end of a large main beam. At the other end of this beam, a water pump was connected about 47 meters deep in the mine, which with the help of a counterweight, pulled the entire system down. This was the machine's resting position. 
The work performed by the engine occurred when the steam was condensed by a certain amount of cold water entering the cylinder, creating a pressure difference, a partial vacuum, causing atmospheric pressure to move the piston downward. At this moment, the pump at the other end was pulled, removing water from the bottom of the mine. Because it used atmospheric pressure, instead of expanding steam pressure to perform the movement, the cylinder of this engine had to be quite large. The first engines had a diameter of 53 cm, which became even larger in later versions. And since the manufacturing technology of parts at this time was just beginning, achieving a precise fit between the cylinder and the piston was extremely difficult. To overcome this problem and obtain a decent seal, they used a leather casing lubricated with grease and added a layer of water on top of the piston. Despite technological difficulties, the first engine could still generate the modest power of approximately 5.5 HP, with larger models reaching 40 HP, which could have been much larger if it weren't so inefficient. Newcomen's engines had a massive energy waste, mainly because the cylinder heated and cooled with each cycle. We are talking about an engine that used less than 1% of the energy of the burned coal to do work. The side effect of all this inefficiency was the characteristic pollution blanket of the Industrial Revolution in England. Even so, the Newcomen engine was used throughout Europe for a long time. In addition to being the only practical alternative to horse-powered pumps, they were financially more advantageous and consumed an abundant source of energy available that horses couldn't eat, coal. The economic advantage became evident years later with the analysis of one of the Newcomen engines built. With the same daily operating cost of 20 shillings, the engine was capable of pumping up to 3.7 times more water than two horses working in two-hour shifts. Another curious fact involving this machine occurred on the day that Thomas Newcomen and his partner John Calley went to register the patent. They discovered that Thomas Savory's steam pump patent was very broad, covering any machine used to lift water by the force of fire. Moreover, the British Parliament, excited at the time about Savory's machine, extended his patent for another 21 years, until 1733. Newcomen's solution to overcome this problem was to form a company with Savory and include him in the patent. But the Newcomen engine still had a lot to improve. This brings us to the fifth relevant inventor in our story, James Watt, who would come on the scene to leap forward in the evolution of the steam engine. James Watt was a Scottish son of a boat builder and owner of a small workshop for building scientific instruments. Watt saw the Newcomen steam engine for the first time in 1764 when a model was brought to him for repairs by a customer. Upon analyzing the machine, he soon realized that it needed a drastic improvement in efficiency and immediately began his studies and experiments on the subject. The result came in the first and most important improvement he made to the steam engine, a separate condenser from the main cylinder that was constantly immersed in cold water. This improvement prevented a huge waste of energy that occurred in the Newcomen engine by cooling the steam in the same cylinder that contained the piston. Another modification he made, which increased the engine's power, was injecting steam under pressure into the piston when the partial vacuum brought it down, pulling the water from the mine at the other end, something only possible by ensuring that the piston rod maintained a rigidly vertical movement. The return movement of the engine occurred with the opening of this valve, which equalized the pressure on both sides of the piston and allowed the weight of the pump on the right side to pull the piston upwards. These improvements meant that the piston cylinder no longer needed to be constantly heated and cooled, remaining at steam temperature. This reduced fuel consumption and increased the engine's efficiency significantly, with some references indicating that the reduction in fuel consumption reached 66%. Faced with this progress, James Watt wasted no time. He filed a patent in 1767, granted in 1769, and built a prototype with 10 HP of power. Announcing the machine to the public as a new way to reduce the consumption of steam and fuel in engines. But improvements continued in the following years. Valves were added to direct the flow of steam alternately in the piston, increasing speed and power. He also changed the water pump side, inserting a flywheel and creating a rotary motion. This large wheel made the engine tend to maintain its movement, transferring power to the load shaft as smoothly as possible. It was a modification that allowed the steam engine to be widely used in factories, greatly increasing engine sales. Another important improvement was the addition of a rotation control sensor, these two rotating spheres. When the engine accelerated too much, 
they moved apart and activated a valve that closed the steam entry into the cylinder, thus controlling the engine's rotation. This can be considered one of the first feedback control systems. Another curiosity in Watt's engines was this gear, called a planetary system. This was done to avoid paying royalties to a competitor who patented the use of the crank in his engines. A very creative solution. Meanwhile, with the success of the machines, Watt entered into a partnership with an industrialist named Matthew Bolton, founding in 1775 Bolton and Watt, which would build hundreds of engines worldwide. There is no doubt that James Watt's engine was extremely important for the Industrial Revolution, to the point that he received several honors in life and after death, the most important being the use of his surname, Watt, as a power unit. Before ending the video, I would like to mention the Spanish inventor Jerónimo de Allans y Beaumont, who is said to have been the first inventor to patent a steam engine in 1606 in Spain, used in the drainage of Spanish mines. But as he was not very relevant to the history of the Industrial Revolution, I'll just mention it. Well, I'll end it here. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it so that the YouTube algorithm can suggest it to other people. Thanks for your company, and until next time.